Behavioral Health Consortium. And last but not least, certainly I want to thank all the employees here at the department for the incredible work that you do every day. Difficult work, challenging work, so important work. When I think about our responsibility, those of us who are elected officials, those of you who are appointed officials and state employees, what comes right to the top is to make sure that every one of our children, no matter the circumstances that they come from, no matter the uh, health, uh, mental health challenges that they face, it's our responsibility to meet them where they are and help them to be successful in life. And that's certainly what all of you do every single day. We're here to announce a, a capital project, frankly, that will help you do your job and do it better. Uh, Secretary, lastly, I want to thank Secretary Manning, who's been an incredible advocate for all of you. My cabinet secretaries make weekly reports to me, and almost on a weekly basis, no, guaranteed on a weekly basis, she includes something in there uh, advocating for the needs of her staff and the employees of the department, whether it's higher salaries, better working conditions, better targeted uh, services for the children and youth uh, that you help every day. And this project it fits right in there in that category. We've seen, you all have seen a change in the needs, particularly of our teenage youth, I think, and, and others and that are not being met with the, the facility that we have at the uh, Delaware Health and Human Services campus, uh, campus across the county that can, will be better served in the building that we're going to rehab using those ARPA funds from the federal delegation to rehab uh, this building, one of the earlier buildings on, on this campus. I can't thank Secretary Manning enough for her advocacy, for her concern and care for the children that you all serve, and for all of you whose job it is to serve those children. Uh, she's uh, when she, when she first informed me about this idea, it was something, it was a fairly long time coming and, and uh, an idea, a need that had been identified by those who work in the field like Representative Longhurst, our, our Lieutenant Governor, and of course all of you. And we, we knew that our, our facilities were not serving the children that needed these, uh, the help the most. And so Secretary Manning came to me and she said, we need to change the way we're doing business, we need to uh, improve the building behind us, uh, and we need to transition into a new way of, of better servicing, servicing the children that need our help so much. So, Secretary Manning, I want to thank you for that. She took me on a tour of the facilities, and she had me at the word go. Uh, and the rest of it was trying to figure out how we were going to make it happen. I said, well, you make it happen. It's, it's your idea. You got great people. We'll get you the resources and try to get out of the way. And so with that, it's a real privilege uh, to introduce the Secretary of the Department of Services for Children, Youth, and Their Families, Josette Manning. So that left me a bit speechless. Um, so I'm really glad I have some prepared comments because I usually don't. And uh, but Governor, thank you. I, I truly appreciate your support and uh, your extremely kind words. This is such an exciting day for our children and families, and for anyone involved in behavioral health services. We would not be here today without the unwavering support of Governor Carney and Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long, Claire Demadius. A.J. Shaw, Senator Poor, Senator McBride, Senator Pinckney, Representative Minor Brown, Representative Longhurst, Representative Williams, and all of our supporters in the General Assembly. We have collaborated and worked towards this for some time, and to finally be able to announce it today is incredibly exciting, and it brings me great joy. In early 2021, the United States Surgeon General released an advisory paper on adolescent behavioral health and it was a call to action for parents, schools, providers, state governments, federal government, um, 
But by that time this report was issued, Delaware, as it typically is, was above the curve and was already having those discussions, was already having those meetings. And we were talking about many of the issues that were raised in that report. Um, specifically, we were talking about the fact that in early 2021, emergency room visits across the country were reporting a 51% increase for girls and a 4% increase for boys in suicide attempts for the same time period in 2019. We were talking about the fact that studies were showing a 40% increase across the board in adolescent behavioral health issues from 2009 until 2021. We were talking about the fact that one in three high school students was reporting that they were feeling persistently sad and hopeless. Let that one sink in. One in three high school students feeling persistently sad and hopeless. We were talking about the fact that the pandemic was exacerbating behavioral health issues and that more than 140,000 children across the country had lost a parent or caregiver to COVID, further exacerbating behavioral health issues and trauma. Delaware recognized those issues and immediately began to collaborate and strategize. This Adolescent Diagnostic Center and expansion of crisis beds will allow us to provide better services to youth and adolescents while we keep them closer to their homes, closer to their communities, with targeted interventions to help stabilize them so that ideally they can return to their homes and communities sooner. It'll ensure they get the proper care they need, that we take a look at the whole child and the family, and we support them and meet them where they are. This is not going to solve all of our problems, but it is a huge step in the right direction. I want to thank my team and the Prevention and Behavioral Health Services Division, particularly Dr. Eileen Fink, who is up here with me today, and Stephanie Trainer, who is with us here today, who developed this concept along with Tammy Walker Gladney, Erica Burgoon, Jeff Hypes, and all of the staff at Terry Children's Center for their dedication and commitment to our children. Your impact on the lives of Delaware children is immeasurable. These are the folks who, despite COVID-19, walked into their facility every single day. They were managing staff shortages and extremely challenging youth, and they never wavered in their mission. We owe them a sincere debt of gratitude and appreciation for their commitment and dedication to Delaware children and families. I am so, so very grateful to the governor, the lieutenant governor, the General Assembly, and our federal delegation for allowing me to give you the tools that you need to better serve our children and families in Delaware. Thank you so much. Well, good afternoon. As Lieutenant Governor, I know Governor Carney was the Lieutenant Governor, recognized that we don't do things without partnerships. So I'm going to ask Spiris Mansavinas and Representative Longhurst to stand next to me because as a leader in the House, the work she's doing in behavioral health, and Senator Mansavinas, whose district that this is, I think it's really important we talk about those partnerships and how working with our congressional delegates uh, is so important. And it's great to have Ozzie and Krista here from uh, the Senator and LBR's office, as Governor Carney indicated, and to the ARPA team, and to our incredible Secretary. Let's give it up to our Secretary, Dr. Eileen Fink, one more time. They're really advocates. We all know, prior to COVID, uh, those of us who've been on this journey for around six years in behavioral health, particularly with the consortium, you know, we were talking about the A's of addiction and autism and trauma and ACEs, and our First Lady, with Governor Carney's first other half, Lady Quillen Carney. She has put a lot of energy into trauma and ACEs. And what you all do here in prevention, neonatal exposure of our young, most vulnerable population with co-occurring disease is so important. And so today, the bricks and mortar are just the tiny part. And I know Representative Longhurst, Senator Poor, with their behavioral task force, the work with Senator Mansa Venus and others, we're looking at wraparound crisis prepared services, but it's also more than just crisis. This is long-term health. And I am so convinced that the bricks and mortar, the investment that we're placing here, the providers, the counselors, the treatment, the diagnostics, the wraparound, will move the needle. 
Delaware continues to make progress nationally as a leader in many of the champion areas of behavioral health. And today, thanks to the ARPA team and the initiatives here, we will continue to do that. But I want you to think about this. Every day, all of us here in elected office take calls from constituents. There is not a day that goes by that my office does not have a call from a family, a parent, a child who is in crisis. Our data reflect in a simple study that we've done here in the state this year that approximately in teenage years, one and four have contemplated not only hopelessness and depression, but suicide ideation. That is significantly an increase. And so we have a lot of work to continue to do, but I'm optimistic, I'm hopeful that in the collaboration, the partnerships, the bricks, the mortar, the support that we will continue to uplift here in Delaware. And so I'm excited to be here. Um, I don't know about you, Governor, I can't wait to be back here uh, and cutting a ribbon uh, on this facility and on this building, which is one part of a system in our state. And again, to all of the staff who give tirelessly here, we want to say thank you and recognize you for this day. And with that, I believe, Governor, we're going to open it up to closing and any kind of questions from the press. Yeah, so I just want to uh, thank everybody once again, starting with Secretary Manning, Dr. Fink, and all the uh, employees here at the department for the incredible work that you do. We can't thank the delegation, President Biden, enough for these resources. This project has to happen, has to happen fast. There's significant criteria for a project like this being eligible. AJ and your team, I know, there's a time frame under which uh, the projects need to go underway and, and get completed. And so this is actually a project that uh, hopefully I'll see by the end of my term. I've got something like two and a half years left and, and we'll be back here uh, hopefully to, uh, to cut a ribbon at that time. We have a, a number of other uh, projects under the mental health banner. Uh, Lieutenant Governor is familiar with. We've set aside about $50 million for these capital projects, mostly for non-state facilities. We've been in discussions with members of the General Assembly. Represent Longhurst, who I mentioned earlier, has significant interest in this area, as do so many of the others that Secretary Manning uh, mentioned. In total, all these improvements will help us improve the services to uh, the children and youth and the, the, the problems that they are, are dealing with. Those problems have been exacerbated clearly by the COVID-19 uh, lockdowns over the uh, past two years. Everybody has felt that uh, stress. People ask me all the time, how, how am I doing? I say, well, it depends on how the, the COVID numbers on any particular day. When the numbers get good, I get good. And I think everybody across our state uh, can relate to that. Our Lieutenant Governor and many of you have been on the streets helping to test and vaccinate folks, uh, and we'll continue to do that to make sure we get through that. So again, thank you all for the great work that you do, and we look forward to addressing any questions media has uh, separately. Thanks a lot.